How's it going everybody? Welcome back and today I'm going to show you guys a few simple ways to change your IP address. Uh, of course, that'll include uh, the Tor browser, the free proxy list, uh, VPN, and a couple other ways. Now, before we begin, if you guys are interested in any of the VPNs mentioned today, you'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below if you're interested in any of them. All right, so let's just get straight to it. Now, the first and simplest way to change your IP address if you're on Windows, I'm going to head to the search bar here, uh, look up CMD and run as administrator. OK, now from here, you want to type IP config forward slash release and you want to click that and hit enter and it'll show a few prompts. And once it's done, it will disconnect you from the Internet worry not just input ip config again but this time hit renew and you are good to go i didn't click it because i don't want to show my uh, real ip address but that's how you can change it now if you're on mac just follow my instructions click the apple menu and open system preferences from there select network highlight the network that you're connected to click advanced click the TCP slash IP tab and click renew DHCP lease. And you should see a slightly different IP address similar to what we did here with Windows. So that's the first way to change your IP address. OK, now another way to change your IP address is by using a proxy. Uh, now, proxies work similarly to VPNs but with far less versatility, security, or speed. Your internet connection goes through a middleman server so that websites and other online resources see the proxy server's IP address and not your own. Now, unlike VPNs, proxies often lack encryption and can leak your IP address through other means and can link your real IP address through other means, so they're not exactly the safest option. Plus, many people would be using the same IP address, so if any of the users are doing any kind of suspicious activity, you might be linked to that. So it's generally recommended that you don't use any free proxies. But the way to use these proxies, of course, it's just very simple. Just go to your proxy settings right here and click use a proxy server and input the address and port and you're good to go. Here are the addresses and here are the ports. You can find many free uh, proxies all over the Internet. Just be careful which one you're using. And if you're looking for protecting your data, a proxy is not going to do that. It's just going to change your IP address. All right. Now, the next way to change your IP address is by using the Tor browser. Simply go to torproject.org slash download and you'll get a folder that looks and you'll get a folder that looks like this. Start the Tor browser and that's pretty much it. Now, Tor is short for the Onion Router, which is a volunteer run anonymity network. The easiest way to get started with Tor is again to download and install the Tor browser, a bare bones web browser that routes all web traffic through the Tor network. Now, Tor encrypts your connection several times and then sends data through multiple nodes which are operated by volunteer Tor supporters. Each node strips away one layer of encryption and the sequence of nodes used changes every time you access a different website. This makes it nearly impossible to trace Tor traffic back to the source. Now, websites will see the IP address of the last node in the chain called the exit node. Tor is free, but it has its drawbacks. It's relatively slow and it's only really suited for basic web browsing uh, because of the multiple times it encrypts your data. It takes quite a bit of time to load things. Tor's anonymity means it is often associated with illicit activity and the dark web. So even though it is not illegal, using it might draw unwanted attention from your ISP and possibly even law enforcement. Since your ISP can still see that your real IP IP address is connected to the Tor browser. So it's generally recommended to combine the Tor browser with a VPN. So you should turn on your VPN before uh, using the Tor browser. Now, another way to change your IP address is by simply unplugging your modem for about five to 10 minutes. And if that doesn't work, just leave it overnight and you should be picking up a new IP address by the time you turn it back on. But your ISP must use dynamic IP addresses in order for this to work. And most do really. 
Now, if that doesn't work, you can just call your ISP and uh, ask them to change your IP address. Another way to change your IP address is by simply changing networks. So you can use your mobile data, for example, just turn on your hotspot on your mobile device and there you go that is a new ip address but of course the best way to change your ip address is definitely by connecting to a vpn uh, now many online services are geo restricted which means they are not available outside of their country of origin the only way to access those services from abroad is to connect to a vpn server in that location and this gives you a valid ip address and causes the website or online service to become available again and of course, it'll protect you with 256-bit encryption. Now, after testing a couple dozen VPNs, I've narrowed it down to these three. So if you're looking to change your IP address with a VPN, these are definitely the best you can find. Uh, so if you travel abroad on vacation, services from back home, such as internet banking or streaming services, will be geo-restricted. As a result, you will need to use a VPN to get an IP address in your home country. So a VPN can help you get around government, ISP, or local network restrictions. By connecting to a VPN, you can get an IP address in a country where locally censored content is still available. Thanks to the privacy provided by a VPN, you can access those usually censored services without being tracked. So a VPN will encrypt your internet connection and route it through a server in a location of your choosing. Websites, online services, and other devices on the web will only see the VPN server's IP address and not your real IP address. Now again, a VPN encrypts your internet connection and routes it through a server in a location of your choosing. Websites, online services, and other devices on the web will only see the VPN server's IP address and not your real IP address. Now, I'm going to go ahead and connect to the ExpressVPN Canada server, and I'm going to show you guys how on the IP finder it's going to show as if I'm in Canada. Now, switching to any other server will show that you're in the selected country. So let me just show you guys as an example here on what is my IP address.com. It should show that I am in Canada. And uh, you'll see in just a second here, it thinks I'm in Canada. So let me just go ahead and turn this off. And again, use maybe NordVPN as an example. I'll go ahead and connect to the United States and show you how that works. So let's just say New York. And as you can tell, it's super simple when it comes to using a VPN. Just click on the server and you're good to go. It's a very effective way of protecting your data and of course changing your IP address. And when I refresh here, it'll show that I am in the United States, uh, specifically New Jersey, New York time. So it really is as simple as it gets with regards to using a VPN. Now, VPNs are useful for torrenting, uh, unblocking region lock content like that from Netflix and BBC iPlayer and bypassing censorship at schools, in offices and in countries like China. Most VPNs can easily hide your IPv4 address, but many VPNs can leak your IP address through various security vulnerabilities. Furthermore, not all VPNs hide your IPv6 address, so you should choose a VPN that either disables IPv6 or can prevent IPv6 leaks by default. So if we go to these settings here in advance, you'll notice that you can prevent IPv6 address detection while connected. So I definitely recommend keeping this one on. You can turn that off if you would like. And all these VPNs, of course, will do the same. And you have extra features such as the kill switch and split tunneling uh, in these VPNs. So the kill switch will stop your internet traffic if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly and split tunneling will allow you to choose which applications are routed through the VPN and which are not. So let's say you just want your torrenting client to be routed through the VPN while the rest of your network is routed through the regular network. So it'll be left outside the VPN tunnel. So yeah, it is a great uh, feature to have and all these VPNs do have that. All right, now all these VPNs will also kind of accommodate to all kinds of users, whether you're looking for a premium VPN like ExpressVPN, something in between like NordVPN that focuses on uh, performance and gives you a whole bunch of features such as specialty servers and custom DNS and whatnot, and Surfshark, which is going to be the best budget VPN that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost. Now, if you're interested in learning more about these VPNs, you'll find links to full in-depth reviews in the description down below, as well as links to pricing and discounts if you'd like to pick up any of these VPNs. Besides that, you'll also be able to get a 30-day money-back guarantee no matter which plan you go for. 
and they do have live chat support to help you with anything or any issue you might be having with these VPNs. So that'll be it for this video. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.